Hey guys, in this video I'm going to see if you can use what you've learned about waves, periodic waves, and standing waves to complete a simple lab challenge. And so let me kind of walk you guys through this setup we have back here. We can see what kind of measurements we need to take about it, and then I'll give you guys what the actual challenge is. After the video, you're going to try to come up with a solution and predict uh, what I'm going to ask you to predict. And then we'll come back in a second video and see what the solution actually is. We can test your calculations and your predictions. So let's look at the setup behind me. So I just have a, an elastic cord or string that's stretched from two fixed ends from this end and that end. And on the other side over there is just a pulley and it's connected to some hanging masses down there. That's basically providing constant tension in that string. So that means any individual pulses we, we introduce to that string will be moving at the same speed if the, st the, the tension stays constant. So um, on the left end of the string, I have a little mechanical oscillator, something that's essentially it's like a speaker. And so if we can drive a periodic electrical signal to that, it's going to make, basically shake back and forth at a particular frequency. And so I have my frequency generator on the bottom, uh, which is attached, attached to the mechanical oscillator. And this mechanical oscillator is going to introduce disturbances at particular frequencies. So let's find out. Let's see if we can set up a standing wave inside of that elastic cord. So my frequency generator is set at a frequency of 1 hertz. So if I turn this thing on, you should be able to see that our mechanical vibrator is moving up and down and up and down and up and down at a frequency of 1 hertz. It's going through one full cycle each and every second. And when it's introducing those disturbances, those disturbances are moving through the string at some particular velocity. We don't know what that is. They're bouncing off a fixed end and coming back here. And so we get, we get periodic disturbances that are kind of moving to the left, moving to the right, or left and right through one another, and there's interference happening. Well, if we can disturb it at the right frequency, we should be able to create a standing wave in that string. Um, remember, a standing wave, we'll know when there's a standing wave because the amplitude of disturbance, or how far the string is disturbed from its equilibrium position, will be much bigger than the amplitude of the disturbance itself. And you can see here that this mechanical oscillator is moving up and down just a little bit. So let's see if we can set up a standing wave. I'm just going to increase the frequency. So we're going to increase how frequently this mechanical oscillator is introducing disturbances. So now we're at about 2 hertz. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep increasing this until we can find the first possible standing wave that can get set up inside of that string. So we're at about 4 hertz. So it looks like we found our very first standing wave. You can see in the middle, it's being displaced from equilibrium much more than the little mechanical oscillator. And so we've got an anti-node in the middle, and then it's fixed on both sides, and so we have two nodes. This is our first possible standing wave. Half of a wavelength fits in that length of the string. Well, let's see if we can keep going and see if we can find another standing wave in the string. So this first one is about 12.66 hertz. So I'm going to keep going. Try to find a second standing wave. There we go. The second clear standing wave. And now we have not just not two nodes, but we have three nodes. We have one on either side. And notice there's a node in the middle. I can basically place my finger there where the string is not moving back and forth from equilibrium, and the standing wave is still there. If I put my finger at an anti-node location, notice the standing wave goes away. So let's see if we can figure some things out about this particular standing wave. So you can see the standing wave. It has three nodes, two on either end, one in the middle, and two anti-nodes. And this is happening at a frequency of 26.21 hertz. Okay? So the first thing I want you guys to try to calculate is what are the velocity of the waves moving through this string? Remember, because the tension is constant, the velocity of any of the periodic waves moving through there will be the same. And so what is that velocity? So question number one, what's the speed of the waves moving through the string? And the information we have right now is 
Well, whatever that speed is, when we disturb this string at 26.21 hertz, it sets up a standing wave with three nodes and two anti-nodes. So think about what else might we need to know before we can try to calculate the velocity of the waves moving through there? Well, what else could we measure about this? Uh, they're obviously moving too fast. We can't measure the displacement of the waves and time how much that is because they're moving quite fast. But we can measure something with a meter stick, and that's just simply the length of the string that has the standing wave inside of it. So let's go ahead and measure with some meter sticks, try to measure accurately the length of the string. So I'm going to turn this down, turn this off, take our standing wave out of there just to make it a little bit easier to measure what that length is. So it's a little bit more than a meter, so I'm going to use two meter sticks. Try to hold one on one end. Okay, so it looks like we're about let's say 1.79 meters, 179 centimeters. So the length of the string is about 1.79 meters. So if we can turn this back on, we can see that second possible standing wave. A string length of 1.79 meters creates, uh, there's a standing wave created in that string when it's disturbed at 26.21 hertz. Question number one, how fast are the waves moving in that string? Okay. And question number two is, what would be the next possible frequency that we could use to create a standing wave? And so 26.21 hertz created a standing wave with three nodes, one, two, three, and two anti-nodes. What frequency would create exactly four nodes and three anti-nodes? That's the second question, okay? So now that you guys have that, what is the speed based on the measurements we've taken, and what is the next possible frequency? I want you guys to go uh, and fill out your lab challenge sheet where you guys are gonna write down the measurements we talked about in the video, go through the solution, draw some diagrams of the standing wave that we saw and the standing wave that we want to create, and tell me what is the wave speed in any of the cases, V, and What's that next possible frequency to create a standing wave with exactly four nodes and three anti-nodes?